Okay, that looks good. Um, all right, let's officially get started. Uh, welcome everyone to our first in a series of some vascular tutorials. And um, like I mentioned, if you um, are going to follow along with this tutorial, that'd be great. But if you're going to download some vascular afterwards and follow along, um, just go ahead and go to simvascular.org, which I'm just showing here real quick, and you can download it in this download tab where you can select an installation package for your type of computer. Um, after you have that done, you can go ahead and um, open Simvascular, and you'll actually get a screen that looks a lot like this, um, if not exactly like this. And there are several components to this that we'll kind of work through as we go through each step of the modeling and simulation process. Um, but just some basics on this, uh, you have several different components. Over here you have your um, sort of tool panel and over here is a tool panel as well. This is where you'll be changing settings for the different tools that you'll be using to complete these steps. Um, you have some toolbars with shortcuts up here um, as well as your kind of standard menu bar and everything. Um, great, so the first step of any sort of symbascular project is actually selecting the image data that you have. And there are a variety of ways that you can get image data that's compatible with symbascular. Um, but for the most part, what you're looking for is some sort of 3D image data. And symbascular can actually take two different types that are kind of common to the medical imaging field. Um, the most common is DICOM. Um, which Symbascular can then convert to a different format that's called VTI. Um, and then um, the second is just going from VTI directly. And I wanted to take a moment to kind of explain uh, what those are for those of you who might not be familiar. Some of you will have kind of seen this type of image data before, um, and that's fine, but just kind of want to go through it. Um, so DICOM data is basically a format that allows people to create uh, data sets. Um, it's very common in medical imaging and it's very useful for storing 3D data because what you can do is actually show different um, stacks of images which um, a stack of 2D images creates a 3D image and it actually can be um, kind of annotated with the actual locations and dimensions within that. Um, so something that a DICOM data will look like, I'm going to use this program called Radiant to just show um, some examples, um, but we'll be working primarily with the other type that I'll talk about in a second. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just show an example here of some um, DICOM data. And it can be a lot of different types. Right here I have pulled up is a stack of image data from a sheep MRI. Um, but you can already see that uh, there's anatomy that might be familiar, like the sheep's heart, you can see the spine. And primarily what this image data is, it's just stacked 2D image. So right now I'm scrolling through it just with my mouse scroller. And you can see that, you know, you actually get different images as you scroll through the stack, but you can see that it's spatially resolved to be in 3D as you go through these 2D images. So that's one type of data that you can actually import directly into um, Symbascular, which is really useful because a lot of medical imaging data will come in this format. Um, the other type which we'll be working with today um, is uh, VTI image data, which is similar in that it's a stack of 2D images that represents 3D geometry. Um, it's just actually uh, more of a format that is associated with uh, BTK um, data, uh, which is sort of like a modeling um, 3D data, um, data set suite. And I just wanna give you an idea what that is. Um, that's viewable in a uh, free program called uh, Paraview, which some of you will have worked with. Um, but I just wanted to also give an idea of what that looks like before um, going to some vascular. All right. So this is actually the data set that we'll be working with today. And you can see that the extension type is VTI. And if you apply it um, and go to slice here, you can see a slice of that image data. And down here, you can scroll through it similarly to how I was doing before with the DICOM data. 
Um, this is just an overview again of the different types of data that Symbascular can take. I'm not sure which types you all will be working with, but you have both options. Um, they can be converted into one another easily, or they can just be used um, as those raw data types with Symbascular. Um, so the data set that we'll actually be working with today to practice some of these techniques is available on Symbascular.org under the um, Quick Guide uh, demo project download. And I will drop that link in for you later, um, as well as on this uh, video when it's posted. But if you go ahead and download that, you can have all the data you need to step through this with me. Um, and so going through it now, uh, we want to start a new project with Ambassador. So we're going to go as if we're going from scratch from the very first step. Um, and to do that, you just go up to the left-hand corner, top left-hand corner, and go ahead and um, create a Simbassular project, SV project. Um, and for that, you'll have to create a project name and where you want to save it. And for now, I'm just going to create um, just something called a tutorial project. And um, yeah, this will be the top level directory from which all the data that you end up making for your model will be stored. And go ahead and start that. And it will propagate it, this with different subdirectories that kind of connote every step that you have to do for modeling. And it's going to be very similar to the steps we'll take through the, um, this tutorial, starting with images. So you need your medical images um, to create a model. And to do that, to import it into Symbascular, go ahead and put your mouse over where it says images. You right click and you go down to where it says add and replace an image. Um, from there, you just have to select where either your DICOM folder is or where your VTI file is. And like I mentioned before, today we're just going to go with the example of VTI, but you do have several options with that. Um, so for where mine is stored, um, this is going to be my file, um, the sample data cm.vti, which will be available for download on symbassador.org. And just go ahead and open it or double click it. Um, and it will ask if you want to copy the image into the VTI, uh, as a VTI into the project. So even if you did DICOM, it would want to convert it into VTI. That's the format that Symbascular saves it as. And go ahead and say yes. And then it will ask, do you want to scale the image? Um, this is an important step if your data is recorded not in the, um, the units that you want it to. So for example, if this data was saved in millimeters instead of centimeters, I would have to scale it if I wanted to work in centimeters. So it's pretty important to um, pay attention to that. And I'm gonna walk through how you would do that. It's pretty simple and then kind of go back and not scale it because I think it's in centimeters already, which is the dimension that you know is pretty common to work with. So if I wanted to scale it, I would just say yes and then put a scaling factor, um, so either kind of make it smaller if it was like say in millimeters or make it bigger if it was in a different unit that I didn't want. But it's already in centimeters, which I like. So we'll kind of do the redundant thing and just say scale it for a factor of one, which will keep it the same. Um, okay. And then you give it a name. And for right now, we're going to just say its image name is demo. So this is our demo image file. Okay. So Give it a minute and boom, all your image data appears in Symbascular. And right now you actually have a couple of different views, uh, a couple of different ways of looking at it. Um, basically what it gives you is uh, the three kind of um, cardinal planes of image data. So axial, sagittal, and coronal. Um, and you can scroll through these, which is the same as going up and down the body. And if you want to, Kind of orient yourself of where you are when you're looking at this data, you can always go down to the bottom right hand um, quadrant and see that this is what the data looks in 3D with these crosshairs being represented in each of these planes. So um, there are a couple of ways to navigate through this. You can either put your mouse over a certain section that you want and click around, like if I was interested in this vessel, um, I can see that I am centered in it here and then I am located kind of along the length here in this one, and I could also click up it. Um, I could just use my scroller um, to go through it, uh, one image plane at a time. 
um, and to get a good look at what the geometries are, what the anatomy is like. Or I could go down here to my image navigator and actually click and drag um, these scroll bars to see which uh, slice I'm in with the number here representing the slice. Um, all right. Now, with this image data, that's like pretty much all you need to do to import new image data. Um, but one other thing that is sometimes interesting to look at is, um, let's see, this display where you can actually do uh, volume visualization. Um, so right now you have all these slices of data and the intensity map, so how bright everything is, um, can actually represent the different volumes that you see in the image data. And Sambassador has the capability of actually rendering that for you, which could sometimes be helpful for um, just seeing what is going on, um, getting a good idea of what your image data is showing. Um, so to do that, just double click on your image um, in this little tab that's below the main image tab. So right now I'm double clicking on demo and your volume visualization tab will pop up over here in the right hand toolbar. Um, you'll see that there's an option for volume rendering that's not currently checked. Um, if you go ahead and check it and give it a second to display. Oh, is it not? Um, this, all this information will pop up. And basically, this is just giving you some options to drag, uh, drag around points to represent um, what gets rendered in 3D. And to show this, I'm actually going to adjust our quadrant view over here um, to better look at the three-dimensional data. Um, right here at the top of each, um, you see that three options pop up in each box. Uh, I just want to view the three-dimensional data right now so that we can get a good look at our volume rendering. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this icon, which is our crosshair icon, and say, no crosshair. Um, so uncheck show crosshair. And then if I press this button, this big square button, this will maximize the certain plane that you're looking at to the full view. So right now, um, you could kind of see that it's rendering some of the image data in 3D that we were looking at before, but it's, it's not very good. It's kind of misrepresenting, it's very faded. Um, that's what this value is for. So if you drag along these points, you can actually map how um, opaque uh, each of the intensity values are mapped onto the screen. Um, and this is very qualitative. So I'm just gonna say that I want things to be more opaque. I want them to start to become opaque a lot sooner by dragging along this point. Um, that's too much. And it's just something you kind of have to play around with um, until here. Okay, so now you're kind of getting a view. Um, what anatomy this is most clearly um, showing is the aorta and the femoral arteries. So the aorta coming down here into the splitting into the femoral arteries. Um, and you can see some type of some of the organs that have um, pretty good uh, resolution on this image being shown as well. But this is just a very handy tool for being able to visualize what your image data is showing um, before you get started into the actual modeling part, if you just need kind of a preview to get yourself oriented and everything. So those are the steps to import data, the different types of data types that Simvascular can process, how to scale it if it's not in the unit space that you want, and how to visualize the volume rendering if you want a preview of what um, the image data is showing. Um, so for right now, I'm gonna uncheck this and bring back my crosshairs by pressing this button, which now is saying that I can reclaim the um, quadrant view and then re-showing my crosshair to get back my original um, image data. Um, so that's it for our image um, import tutorial. Uh, we can go ahead and pause the recording now and then we'll have a little bit of time to discuss before we move on to the next tutorial, which is going to be plotting center lines in this image data.